Thank you for the greeting words and for Bogato Sharoshi, not only interpretation, but also the organization. And in addition to supporting the international, international cultural institutes, it is equally important for us to know that we have other supporters who help us get Roma theater into the mainstream. And those are theater critics who can give us feedback, where should we develop, what is what we're doing good, and they also help to to spread the word and that our work is being heard. Noemi Herzog has been following our work for years, and while many critics still approach Roma theater primarily as a social construct, it is important for us that Noemi has always approached us from a theater professional perspective and that is very important to us. We were also very happy that she wrote the introduction to the drama book, and we are very happy that, of course, building future is another huge step, and although she is taking care of her, of her little child, she is here with us, and please share, us, please share with us your thoughts and a message about the forthcoming drama book. Thank you very much. It was nice to hear that theater critic is uh, connected to mainstream. It is not often heard, and it was really nice to hear to commemorating also on Alenja because I'm sure she would be here. When we were raising money for this volume, together, we had to articulate why we thought it was important to publish it. And at the time, I highlighted one of the many com competing reasons. One of the typical paths to theatrical legitimacy in Hungary is through the publication of drama books, which independent theater really needs. So I very much hope that this volume is published, will help this theater company, and not only them, but also our fellow Roma citizens. As already said, I'm a theater critic, and I like to talk about the dramas, but first I'd like to talk about the theater company, because I think if someone is following online this today, book events, maybe they don't really know the work of the theater company. It is important that since 2007, the theater has been helping Roma citizenship through various means and has been publishing drama text for three years now. In this theater company, Roma and non-Roma people build a team, and I hope that this openness, this respect for diversity, is highlighted rather than ethnic homogeneity and segregation, and that it will have a positive effect on the majority of in Hungary. If there will be Roma actors on in the mainstream theaters and also Roma plays, and if Roma creators, dramaturgs, and also playwrights can have can have a say, that is really important, and it is not only because the independent theaters, but also because of these drama books. If somebody would want to write about the independent theater, then, then it is important that it would be highlighted and would have an own chapter in this book. And this chapter would certainly include also how easily they adapt to the most varied circumstances. For example, during the recent epidemic, which happened to be rather unfortunate for the theater, they have done so 
if only because they have always been keen to live in closed, clear theater spaces for untrodden paths. And they are doing the same now in frivolous and maskless Budapest where theaters are forbidden to ask the audience for immunity passes while they are marketing a safe open air performance, the punk opera entitled The Frog Tales. In this context, I have to tell you that when I asked Rodrigo Balog if it would be a problem if my four month old started making noise during a performance, he replied, making noise is never a problem. Why am I telling you this? Because there aren't many baby friendly performances in Budapest today. So the company has adapted to the needs of toddlers. But they also adapted to the conditions of a cautious opening in the summer of 2020 when they presented their play Fallen Up Village Day on Galliot Hill because at the time no one wanted to be in a closed space. The script of this performance is included in the book, as already said. But they were also among the first to adapt to the circumstances of complete lockdown. At the time of the first wave, at the beginning of the lockdown, they presented an online premiere in Hungary at practically at the same time as the Erkin Theater. The play is called Kosovo Monamur, a work by a Montenegrin and a Belgrade author about the war in Kosovo. And it was launched and presented in Berlin and also in Hungary. And it is about the war in Kosovo and the biggest genocide against the Roma since the World War. The script is also included in the new volume. And finally, if there was such a study on the presence of independent theater in Hungary, it would certainly mention the company's educational activities. I would like to recall the time when in 2013, when the independent theater's Pergint Fellowship Young Staff wrote a letter to the Kotona Yozef Theater challenging the portrayal of Roma in the production of Gypsies. I believe that in a well-functioning theater, there would be many similar debates and we could discuss these issues together without any tension. In any case, the independent theater is doing a lot to ensure that these issues are not the only ones that exist. Just when we look at how the mainstream how mainstream society is portraying Romas, so that the same people are not always the only ones who get a say on Hungarian stages. They do a lot, for example, by staging and helping to stage Roma self-representations. The Roma Heroes Festival, originally called Storytelling Festival, which has been running since 2017, is a part of this and has already brought together a number of European Roma artists and theater companies. The independent theater selected the place of the predecessor of this volume, the first Roma Heroes volume from the program of the festival in 2019. And it was largely from here that the text for this volume were selected. The Voivode display with the traits of a folk play, a distant relative of Fiddler on the Roof, written by the Russian director Edgar Edge from the 1968 novel Caravan by the Romanian Zaharia Stanku, originally titled Gypsy Heaven in the early 90s. It is a rare dramatic tribute to the Roma victims of the Second World War. Or the script by the only Roma theater company in Romania, Juvlipen, this feminist work entitled Who Killed Somna Grancha, a tragedy based on a true story, both poetic and balladic, about the first gypsy girl in Sepis who went to school in jeans, the only one in her village. Or the European family, a piece born from a collaboration of artists of different nationalities from collective improvisations, the text of which was finally put together by Richard O'Neill, who has been invited to all the Roma Heroes festivals so far. In contrast to the plays in the first volume, this book no longer contains monodramas but plays with several characters. As Tomas Segadi, the theater company's education expert, writes in the foreword to the book, this gives us the opportunity to present very different perspectives. And learning, and learning about 
perspectives different from our own is essential in an increasingly polarized world. When we ask ourselves honestly, are we able to honestly see if other if the other person is right, can we think about what the other person might be feeling in a given situation? Many m of us would find it difficult to answer these questions. The key to our personal well-being lies in understanding and letting go of the other person. We can find our own path by understanding the circumstances of other people's choices. I wish for all readers present and following the event online is that they learn about the circumstances of others' choices through this book. And I wish all the fun reading the book. And next time, I hope we will see some of these plays on stage, on mainstream stages, and that they were performed by a colorful and very diverse team of performers. Let's see the actors. Thank you very much, Noemi. We will do our best to live up to the picture you have painted of us. After what others have said, of the mainstream, it is important what we are doing and why we are doing it and how we got to this volume that you can hold in your hands. Rodrigo Balog, the professional director of our theater, will share his views. Thank you for being here. I'm really glad you are here. I would really like to hear the actors, so I will be really short. This miracle started six years ago. I should be holding four volumes because we have another one, monodrama volume, which Noemi also mentioned. So just imagine we have four different volumes. Roma Heroes, little known that this was the title of a creational uh, concept written in 2015 by the staff of the Independent Theatre to curate the drama and theatre section of the European Roma Di Digital Cultural Archive, commissioned by the German Kulturstiftung. And we, and our pleasure was to be working in the curator section. And not long after, we were tasked with exploring a previously almost completely unexplored area, the present and past of European Roma drama and theater, and, and also who did what and how are they involved in Roma theater. After that, we, we, we continued our work separately because we wanted to present it to the whole world. And as Noemi also said, in 2017, 2018, we were called International Roma, Sta Roma Storytelling Festival, and we have three of them, three of the five ones in, in, in them. And in 2019, 2020, 20, we developed into a chamber theater festival. We m had a really big path with all of these works because we had to pay attention that this can be included in the educational system. We had two ways. First, it was the non-formal trainings that trained trainers had actually workshops in schools, in secondary schools, and it is very, it's going really well, but we also wanted to have university and college educators have these materials. And two times we had interdisciplinary course trainings where 13 universities we could teach. And also we have, we have this course in Romania, it's called Art Hub, and also two universities in Romania joined us 
in this interdisciplinary course. Exhibitions of portraits of the authors have been held, and these drama books have been published, these beautiful books. April 2021 was a month of mourning. You have mentioned Anna Lengel before, who has been working since 2011 with us. She translated and proofread many of our plays. And, and she was also the editor of the monodrama volume in Hungarian. But, but we have lost her and also Igor Krikunov this year director of the Romance Theatre in Kiev, who was also one of the authors of the play, The, the Voivode. And now, may they rest in peace, and may God bless the authors, translators, proofreaders, editors, and nearly 30 other staff members who put the best of their knowledge into this volume. Without wishing to be exhaustive, I would like to mention Victoria Kondi and Edina Sabados, who accompanied and assisted the process from the receipt of the manuscripts to the end of the printing process. And thank you, thank you very much for your work because it was wonderful. I would like to highlight also Marie-José Sheeks, who was also the editor of two English language volumes. Peter Krostev, the translator of the play The Void and editor of the Hungarian volume. Hi, Peter. And I would also like to mention, who is very important to me, Norbi Ola, who designed the covers of both volumes. God bless the contributors, the supporters of this volume, and those who will read these books in the future and buy them. God bless cultural consumers and God bless cultural workers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. And I think we have beat around the bush enough because we all came today to have an insight of what is included in this drama book. In the event today, we will have some video excerpts of those plays that have actually played these, these works. And we also have actors with us who will play some excerpts of these dramas. And we will start with Hukilt Somna Grancha. Uh, Juvli Pen brought this to life. Michael Dragan, who was here many times in Budapest, and he has also a monodrama in the previous volume. And also Michael Dragan, Zita Moldovan. Kingo Julia Kirai translated it into Hungarian and into English. It was translated by Diana Mano. And the question arises, who has the responsibility that a Roma girl on, in the countryside who only wants to go to school commits suicide? Who is responsible for that? We will start the focus video, and then one of the youngest actors will show an excerpt of the drama. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we present the enormous drama of the poor gypsy, too smart for the miserable world in which she was given birth. They say that the family brings you down and the family destroys you. We present to you step by step the funeral of Somna Brancha. The gypsies from seven counties have supported funeral, funeral f financially. We're broadcasting live as Somna Grancha is being escorted on her last journey with fan fanfare. We have many guests. The most important man in Sipsis will join us, and he has or already arrived in the voivode of Sipsis. Please tell me, 
Why is all the splendor? Miss, we are not a laughing stock. The politicians came and we did our duty. We gave them our memories, kibbles, teapots, red flowers. Are they filming? Yes, yes. Please film the wreaths too. We have everything prepared. Yes, we're filming them. Tell me, why do Gabor women walk behind men? The Gabor women are very honest, very worthy. They have beautiful braids that fall on their back, not like others. Why did this girl, Somna, have to marry and give birth to so many children in poverty? If you had to make a decision, would you rather let a girl die than let your girls go to school? Are they filming? Yes, sir, they are filming. I swear on what I hold dearest, God shall take me if we will not keep our girls in school day and night. It happened because of me. It's my fault only. I urged her to go this way. She was begging me to speak to her father, to convince him to leave her alone, to let her go to school, not to nag her about marriage, to let her find her own path. But why? She wanted to escape the gypsy ghetto. She, she was longing for a different way of living. She wanted to escape poverty and squalor. I promised her that, but I couldn't keep my promise. What remorse did I feel from what she wrote on the wall? It's my fault. If I had kept my promise and talked with Grancha, maybe we could have pre prevented this tragedy. It's solely my fault. She was a sensitive kid, my daughter. My daughter did not bother anyone, 17 years old. She had no business with men. She was decent because this is how I raised her. I did not feel guilty. I do not feel guilty. That's right, good man. You are right. Why, did, why didn't we let her go to school? We didn't let her go to school. That's true, but where could have we gotten all that money from? We only wanted what's best for her. To tell the truth, our girl was a little twisted. The doctor told us that she was taking pills. She suffered from an illness, but never talked about it. We saw that she's upset by something, but we didn't know it was that severe and that she would go that far. Now, I'm grateful that all our neighbors and relatives helped us bury her with dignity in a white bridal dress with a varnished coffin made of oak wood. As I told you, she had a heavy heart because... because... What is it called, woman? Depression, right. Our daughter had depression. How should I put it? It doesn't matter whether Somna was Roma or not, she was a normal teenager. It happens to them also, rarely, but it does. Do not forget, there are always exceptions. I still cannot understand why she did that. Never forget that day. I want all of you to ask yourselves, who killed Somna Grancha? Or wait, no. Ask yourselves rather, why did Somna Grancha commit suicide? Look, look at my father's hatchet, how long he's been looking for it. He never thought it was up here. I forgot the dye bottle open. If the little one steps on it, she'll be red from head to toe. 
Hyper as she is, I'm sure it's gonna happen. Sunita, my little sister, what a relief it's been to watch over you all night. You gave me strength. What a big hand I have. Look at my feet hanging over the floor. It's beautiful here. I didn't expect that. No more worries, no more longing, no more fear. They won't let me go to school. My body feels light and one with everything else. What's the chair doing upside down? Did I push it? So what am I doing up here? No, no, it ain't no good, it ain't no good. I must focus, scream for help. Someone has to hear me, mother, father, little sister, brother. Can't any louder, cause my neck hurts. What, I'm still here? After all, I'm glad they didn't catch me. I'd have been ashamed. The plan was good, it didn't fail. Why stay here? School was over for me. The priest thought I could do it, but I couldn't. I had to go back to the village. You can't escape from here. That's how they bury me, in a white wedding dress and a big coffin. I wanted real bad to go to high school in Miracura, Kuwait, but I was sick of the last row in the classroom. Forgive me, mother. Forgive me, father. If you love me, you'll understand. Stop looking at me like that. Please beat me, kill me if you want, but don't look at me like that. There was no place for me on this earth. I was caught between two worlds and both gave me nothing but suffering. Is there a place for girls like me? With a school as good as fresh bread, here there was no school or bread for girls like me. I've ended up hating who I was, hating the poor boy I had to marry, all the relatives, the school, my classmates, the priest, but especially myself, because I was real powerless. I was hurting and I wanted to punish them. Now, I'm asking all of them for forgiveness. I still don't have it in me to forgive myself. I see you all in your dreams, but other girls shouldn't go through what I've been through. If you are thinking of taking your own life, listen to me, talk to someone, to anyone, but don't go all the way like I did. It was too much for me. But it's good that I wrote on the wall, so it stays there. Anyways, everyone f will forget about me after a few years. Dar's coming down. I see a red rose in my mouth and thorns in my throat, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. Don't believe anything they say about me. Thank you very much. The next play was, again, teamwork. The playwright, it was created by Juvelipe, just as Who Kid Somna Grancha, and the script was also written during COVID by many different creators and makers in front of their computers, they were they had rehearsals and they hit record and also not only the workers of the the independent theater uh, played a role, but also we were joined by Sonia Carmona Tapia from Spain, Sebastiano Spinella from Italy, and Richard O'Neill from the UK. And the play was translated into Hungarian by Victoria Kondi. We will see an excerpt and then it will be acted out by Tomás András Segedi after the focus video.
next week when I come back, I want you all to come for my birthday par party. It is a big one, wow. you know? You didn't mention it, mommy. Yeah. Can I have you something organized or anything? No, 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 no. Everything is set. Don't you, you worry. Don't say. I have everything paid for. Yeah. Wow. Nice. We'll be there. Yeah. Well, listen, listen. Mom, I, I know. There is a problem. I cannot come this time. I cannot be there this time. Me neither. So then let's 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 postpone it. Your mother has organized a party for her big birthday, something for the whole family, and you two are too selfish to come. What do you mean you uh, can't come? Well, m maybe maybe we can just do it some other time. Um, maybe in the summertime. No, 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 stop. No, we're, we're always changing things for those two. No, no, come no, on, no, come on, no, come on, Tommy, no, let, quiet. No, let me explain. No, Be quiet, Tommy. You have you to have understand. To, uh, no, we're always, we're always changing things. Your mother's always changing things to accommodate you two. No, this time, no, this is the, this is the last on. one. If you don't come, you two, come on, you, you two, Lucy, mother, please, uh, let me explain. But father is uh, right, uh, Mello, uh, father is right. You are not contribute to the family. I mean, you do I mean, always this. Tommy yeah, and the, you are I mean, savage. finally, I have this project. I have this contract to, to be signed in the next few days. I'm finally working with the biggest orchestra, the biggest Roma wow. orchestra in Europe, you know, with the best musicians. Mm -hmm. They even bought me. Look, I, I, I finally could buy an accordion, a new, brand new, beautiful accordion. Look that. Look. Looks good, huh? Look, I did it nice. finally, you know. And that would be nice as well if yeah. you could come home once a time or once a year. Yes, just at I, my I, I, I just at our mommy's birthday, year, for example. Yeah. Of, uh, a year, but yeah, you yeah. know, I have to work now. Mm. This is a new camp uh, in this close uh, uh, place. And I have to work with them. This is a refugee camp, and they uh, came came from far. So I have to help them. There are family. There are many children. I have to care of it. So you know, th this is a bad situation, a very bad situation for them. Uh, you know, they they have no food, and the government gives some food for them, okay, but they give them pork, and they Muslims. Do you know what is it? It is terrible, and if I don't do it, uh, it, it will be crashed. I worked a lot with my uh, okay. group, but if I if I okay, miss, you know it well will be that I look so, after sorry, disadvantaged I... children as well. I know what does it mean. I know what does it mean to take care of children. Yes, this is my work too. I, I, Tommy, please, please listen to me. I go to the school every day. I teach them. I take care of them. Then I take care of my family as well. You know how much time I spend with father and mommy. But I try to have some life of my own as well. Okay, but it. But but not, not you are too life, selfish, you, know? you uh, and mellow. <laughs>
and we're adopting a child. I still want to be the part of this family, but only if you fully accept us. As European family was was made during the pandemic, then the next play Voida is goes far more back where where there was genocide and war. Igor Krikunov adapted it, who was director of the Kiev theater, and he and that was one of the theaters of the three stone theaters. And we had to let him go as well. So there will be an interview excerpt in the next focus video. It is based on Stanku's novel and Egadze's play. And it is the story of a gypsy caravan whose leader is determined not to let his community die out against the wishes of the Romanian government. And he wants to save everyone. The play was translated into Hungarian by Peter Krostev and into English by Marie Jose Sheeks. So this is the camp. Gypsies always live in camps, good man. I know, I know. We have nothing to hide. Our camp is open to everyone, like a meadow. So, could you be the voivode? Yes, good man. I'm in charge of the camp, so ask me. I have to make a list of all of you. Tell me your name. How many of you are in the camp? All right. I'm Himbasha. I belong to the Bulibasha clan. And now we celebrate the birth of the hundredth fellow in the camp. The hundredth. Come on, rejoice with us. I do not need your joy. Beware. I said beware. Listen up quietly. Pay attention to what the provision has to say. In the name of His Majesty, in order to keep safety of the nation and also to avoid disturbances both on the German-Romanian front line and also in the hinterland of our glorious troops, in view of our constant protective care of our subjects and for the benefit of the people, I command as follows. Every gypsy caravan that wanders within the territory of the country shall move to the remote lands nominated by the authorities where gypsies shall live and work from now on. Violation or refusal to order will result in death by gunshot. We have never hurt anyone. 
I'll explain. I have been ordered to accompany you to your destinations. The order shall take effect upon reading the provision. Kim, listen. You have the power of a buffalo. But we are ordinary people. What kind of devil made you to apply voluntarily for this work? Drink some water. You will be relieved. It won't get any easier, Kim. And neither for the ones we left behind along the way. If you want to send me there after, then keep this water sprinkled on my grapes so the grass will grow. Stop whining. No, Voivode. Explain something to the people. Why did you have to volunteer for this forced labor? Maybe you have a purpose. Yes, I have. I want to save time. I want our camp to reach the remote areas designated by the authorities where gypsies will continue to live and work as late as possible. I'm afraid we'll have only one job there, digging the graves for ourselves. And if we can't stop even for one day, I'll take advantage for it. Maybe we won't have even a day left to stay alive. But one day, this mad work will have to come to its senses and understand. By the time it comes to its senses, my bones will be laying among the trunks. Keeper, let's go to the big campfire. We'll serve whatever we have. I suppose it could be a divine order because I have been dealing with theater since I was a child. I gathered the neighbor children around me and I wrote plays from short stories and we performed them. We gathered the audience, neighbors, adults and elderly. We made all kinds of curtains. We played music ourselves, we played the guitar, the accordion, and we put the music on the speaker. So I grew up with this around me. This is where I got the initial boost, thus my mission was decided. It's a complex piece because its dramaturgy itself is fantastic. Besides its great dramaturgy, the main reason why we put it on stage is that it was written by my teacher. He was my master who made me fall in love with theater. He set a course for my development. He planted his own thoughts and ideas into me. And what we can see now, in a sense, all sprang from those seeds he planted into me. As his former student, I wanted to commemorate him. He is no longer with us. May the earth lie lightly on you. I'm speaking about Garigadze. Since he raises important issues and has an excellent dramaturgy, the play should be in our theater repertoire. Because this kind of dramaturgy teaches and fulfills theatrical talent. This is still a problem. When I was young and I was still studying acting, my profession was popular and valued in general, also among the Roma. Today it has no authority because you must work so hard that nobody wants to pursue becoming an actor. Most people just want to have fun, dance, and that's all. Our task is completely different. We also have to use our head. 
You need to have cultural knowledge to be able to communicate with the audience. You must work, work, and work very hard. Young people today don't like to work. They have the mentality of needing everything right now and want to become stars at once. We ran a studio. Fifty children were studying there at the time. Only two of them joined the theater company. It's complicated because I always think that in theory I have a contract signed with the Kiev National IK Karpenko Kari Theater Cinema and Television University to start a Roma class, but it's not easy to find so many high school graduates and university students. This is the most important thing. You can't be lazy. Theater won't do itself. You must dedicate your whole life to it and you may have to give things up. Everybody has different ideas of life, both in a moral and intellectual sense. But theater requires humility. In the theater you serve because it's the sanctuary of art. Just like you worship God in a church, you have to give theater reverent honor too. After the war stories, we'll have another war story. But in time, it's not that far away as the Second World War. It's about the war in Kosovo. In Kosovo, when Amur by Jovan Nikolic and Ruzdi Sejdovic, we see a war that we will see in the video, it's a war where Serbs and Albanians fought each other while the Roma population who lost their properties, many had to flee their countries and many lost their lives. This, this play is about an educated local Roma family while, br while one brother used to work as a teacher, the other is trying to keep the family-owned restaurant. And the good relations he has maintained with both Albanians and Serbs for decades. The play was translated into Hungarian by Kinga Kenyeres Dulasi and into English by Anna Lengyel. After the focus video of the performance, our colleague David Varga is next, also from the Yugoslav region. So the story is not that far-fetched from him. And he will read the background material on the war in Kosovo. And that we remember that the genocide happened not so far ago near to us. Reggel tízre legyél a kaszárnyában teljes felszerelésben. És hozd magaddal az igazolványodat. Tessék! Milyen felszerelésben? Háborús mozgósítás, háborúban állunk! Hát aztán kikkel állunk mi háborúban? Az albán szeparatistákkal és szélsőségesekkel. Én senkivel nem állok háborúban, csak önmagammal. Aztán kire hagyjam a kocsmát? Hogy adjak enni a családomnak? Azokat vidd magaddal, akiknek... Se kutyájuk, se macskájuk. Engem hagyd békén, testvér! Az államod háborúban áll, neked pedig kötelességed megvédened. Azt várod, hogy én védjem meg a te kocsmád és a te asszonyod seggét? Ezen a szent szerb földön élsz. Szerb kenyered ezzel, a szent szerb nyelvet beszélek. Az én nyelvem a románi. Tök fej. Kit érdekel a te nyelved? De akarod, majd kivágjuk és együtt hallgathatsz a lányoddal. Az én lányom romául hallgat, és még egyszer nem erészeld arra a szent szem, szádra venni őt! Ne játszadozz, háború van! És tudod, mit szoktak csinálni a háborúban a dezertőrökkel? A falhoz állítják őket, és rövid az eljárás. Megrebsz, Györgye! Mennyi emberrel ittunk együtt ebben a kocsmában? Most pedig egy éjszaka alatt kikeltél magadból! Mi ütött belétek mindannyiótokba? Háborúban nincs barátság. Csak ennyit akartam mondani. Ja? 
és azt is tudjuk, hogy minek vallottad magad. Mi minden tudunk. Azt is tudjuk, hogy kikkel cimborálsz. Hát engem küldenek háborúba. Engem. És mégis kivel kell háborúznom? Most aztán szükségem van a barátaim segítségére. Én már senkiben nem bízom, Jasár. Isten elhagyott bennünket. Ez nem az Isten dolga. Ezt a emberek művelik. Húsvér emberek! Ezek nem emberek, ezek kannibálok. Emberi hús fognak zabálni. The Roma have lived in the Serbian Autonomous Province of Kosovo and Metohija for more than 600 years, coexisting in harmony with Serbs and Albanians alike. Unlike the Roma in central Serbia, they had the privilege of attending school and also had their first radio and print media in the Romani language. Roma associations organized concerts and folklore performances while writers published books. The Roma from the area of Kosovo and Metohija were possibly among the most educated in all of Serbia. Almost all Roma and Serbian and Albanian in their daily communications. The turning point of their privileged status was the clash between the Serbian armed forces and Albanian extremists who advocated an independent Republic of Kosovo. At the time, Roma were confronted with the demand of Serbs and they remain loyal, that they remain loyal to the state of Serbia, and on the other hand, with the demand of loyalty on the part of Kosovo separatist Albanians based on their tradi traditionally good relations with the Roma. The Roma community, commonly known as Roma, Ashkali, or Egyptians, have always been the poorest and economically, politically, and socially the most marginalized community in Kosovo. Roma have often been the target of violent attacks, and some Kosovo Albanians, the country's largest ethnic group, contemptuously refer to Roma as the collaborators of the Serb minority. Meanwhile, Albanian speaking Ashkali and Egyptians have also often been the target of ethnically motiv motivated attacks. In recent years, many Roma, Ashkali, and Egyptians have been displaced outside Kosovo, reducing their numbers from 200,000 before the 1999 war to some 38,000 today. During the bloody fights in Kosovo, many Roma families were brutally killed while women were raped and then executed in one of the largest ethnic persecutions and genocide of Roma in Europe since World War II. For 20 years, the European community remained silent and indifferent to these atrocities. But finally, in 2020, proceedings against suspected Albanian war criminals were launched at the International Court of Justice at, in The Hague. After war stories, let's take an outlook on peace times. The next play is much more closer in time in Hungary, although there's peace, but maybe we don't have peace of mind. We are in a small village where a well, bank give, is not giving any loans to the people because they are poor, who will give them money, usurers. We will have the story of a woman, and we will speak about questions. To what extent is our responsibility? What kind of us uh, usurers and leaders we allow to operate above us? 
and similar questions are raised in Rodrigo Balog's play, which Noemi has already mentioned. It was first presented, premiered in the tour uh, theater. The play treats the audience as tourists arriving for the village festival, whose members not only walk from scene to scene, but also get to taste the delicacies. It was translated into English by Onno Lendja and and Orshi Balog will present an excerpt from the performance and then we will see the video focus scene. <laughs> Try our fresh candies, image you're not getting any. Greatest souvenirs and you can even eat them. Eva's famous La Poche Fudge. Take your pick. It only sets you back one euro. But you're welcome to pay in forints if you so prefer. I'm not picky that way. Fresh from the oven, sweet and delicious. What? Are you saying this little man is too much for you? But you're from Budapest. Did you think you were going out to the boonies so you won't need real money? Fine then. Eat it. It's yours. No reason to feel guilty for ripping off the penless. Go ahead. Suck it on for free. Fuck them, they make me so mad, it's enough to make me lose my dialect. <laughs> that was the scene. Jó napot kívánok! Jó napot kívánok! Erdélyiné vagyok. Erike mondta, hogy megbeszélték, hogy már majd jöhetek. Ma tud fogadni. Igen. Tessék bejönni. Megkínálhatom egy kólával? Á, ne tessék fáradni. Ó, de hogy fáradtság, hogy a szegés. Köszönöm szépen. Akkor csapjunk is bele, jó? Megtenné, hogy átadja a telefonját a végén vissza. Egyedül neveli a gyerekeket, jól tudom? Férjem elhagyott bennünket, senki se tudja, hogy hol van. Egyedül álló anya vagyok én is. A gyerekek hány évesek? Kettő, hat, meg tizenhat. Akkor főállás anyaság is csak akkor kap, amikor a kettő, három lesz. De az is csak egy évig, mert a legnagyobb betölti a tizennyolcat, így az már nem fog járni magára. Most gyesem van, ami 25.630, a családi pótlék 51 ezer, az összesen 76.630, jól mondom? Mm. Van-e más bevétel, ami rendszeres? Ösztöndíj a legnagyobb gyereknek, rokoni támogatás, feketézés? Nincs ilyesmi. Mondják, hogy szokott farogatni ennek annak. Abba mennyi jön be? Nem sok, 5000 körül. Valahogy így. Na nézzük, tartozik-e valakinek? Ha igen, kinek mennyivel? 
villanytartozáson van egy kevésre. Uh -huh. Mikor fizetett utoljára? Így három hónapja fizettem. Benne vagyok, vagy 40 ezerre. Az nem lehet, hogy négy hónapja fizetett utoljára? Lehet. Csak azért, mert ha négy hónapja fizetett utoljára, akkor várható, hogy még ebben a hónapban ki fogják magánál kapcsolni a villany. A kikapcsolás, az újrabekötés és az adóság díja 100 ezer forint lesz a hónap végére. Ezt is tudja? Lehet. Van bankkártyája? OTP-nél. Na, az áhítelkerettel hogy áll? Az mi? 76.630 legális, olyan 20-25 ezer körül mehet minuszba a kártyájával, ha megigényli. De nem is biztos, hogy még ebben a hónapban hozzáférhet, majd csak a következőben, de hát addigra meg már sötét lesz a ház, ápa. Meg ez az áhítelkerettel is nagyon kalkít. Házbankok meg szóba se jöhettek. Vagy ott van még a provident ügye. Onnan kaphatna 40 ezeret, mondjuk havi törlesztésre, ha jó fej az ügyintézője. Az 10 tőke plusz a kamatok, az olyan havi 21.500-ra jön neki. Ha az beszorozza a négy hónappal, a 40.000-86.000, 000, nem gyors az így tud követni? Hú, na most. Ha én adok magának, nem kell. Két hónapra adnám, de hát azért, mert a tőkét azt nekem is forgatnom kell. 50 százalékra. Az első hónapban 30 ezer, és a második hónapban is 30 ezer. Ne álltja jó is. Végé egy 60 lesz, nem pedig 86, mint a Provident. Elfogadható ez is? Ne. Kölcsönszerződéssel aláírom én ezt. Ebben nem lesz benne a kamat, csak a bűnt. Viszont nem tájékoztatom, hogy ezt én most olyan tudom. Ha nem vagytok valók végrehajtónak, vagy most megterhelik a házát. Erre nem lesz szükség. Jaj, de hogy is. Sose piszkítok olyan asztalról, mint már ennyi kaptam. Magát a Terika ajánlotta nekem, ez részéről is nagy felelősség, de ez biztosan tudja. Én csak megbízható ügyfelekkel vagyok hajlandó dolgozni. Én se adom ki magát senkinek. Jó? Gondolkozzon azon, amit most mondtam, és szóljon, hogyha ezek a feltételek megfelelőek. Megfelelőek, ugye? Minden, amiről most beszéltünk, ez tudja. A jövő hét elején keresem. Köszönöm. Magát is. Köszönöm. Milyen anyám nem vágni fel? Nem elég, hogy az adományzó át nem volt, az ingyen ezeknek a nyomorultaknak, most van valaki kurválkodás, hogy a fejét, hogy vissza tudja fizetni a kart. Egyél el már mindent, amit mondanak. Mit csinálsz, fiam, azok még megbeszélnek. Ne törd el a csipeszemet! Mit csinálsz, Geri? Hol volt, hol nem volt, volt ezt a mara, eladta a vágyát, kiment Hollandiába, a király meg itt hagyta a pisztolyt. Telt múlt az idő, hazajött, tehetőzene, kértek tőle költség. Nyúl című Marika, adott, buszol, tanulakon, családoknak kamasz. Csak annyi volt a haszony, hogy megkóstolta a pénzüst. Ez a pénzüst, hogy hagyd meg a tartalmat. Az oda belecsapott a dohány udorába, a kimért húsba, a kekszba, a fába, faszom tudja mi. Ingyen nem szabad adni senkinek semmit, mert ami ingyen van, az annyit is ér, és egyébként, ha már itt tartunk. Drága kicsi fiam, meg tudnád mondani, hogy hányféle adidas cipőt hordasz? Segítsek! A kollégium talán ingyen van, a külföldi úton háztak a nyelvtan folyam. Szerinted ezek miből vannak? Mit emberkek hittek el? Szerinted mi lenne velünk, hogy én ezt kapom, vagy nem? De nem hagyod abba sose! Megtudsz, hogy 8000 forintból nem lehet megélni. Inkább kamatozási múzik leróluk a bőrt is, igaz édesanyád? Dehogy szólsz? Nem akar beszélni a remedek hozzád a hölgyem. Mindent beszél, amit te írod a könyvedben. Ne írjál, ne hívjál. Hány éve van ez? Inkább a saját anyám lenni a drága vagyok. Thank you very much. That's all we could fit in the volume, and also that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for being here, and we have a great opportunity for you because you can buy all the volumes with a 20% discount, similar to the Monodrama volume. 
and who is still thinking, you can also get this book at the Irok Bolcha Bookshop and also at the Independent Theatre. Thank you very much again for all our supporters who contributed to this drama book. I'd like to highlight Baru Foundation, who are the first supporters to believe that we that what we do is important. Then the S Open Society Institute, Creative Europe, Summa Artium, and the European Cultural Foundation, who contributed to the creation of the dramas and the performances featured in the book, and the 70 individual supporters and donors who have supported the cause of Roma drama. Thank you again for the Goethe Institute, who not only gave the venue, but also to have a toast with you here in the room. Unfortunately, online viewers cannot join. And we don't count our chickens before they are hatched. This is the second volume of Roma Dramas, which thanks to the hundreds of people we, hold in, we can hold in our hands and which is available for generations to come. Thank you very much.